I want to talk to you today about the myth of apostolic succession. Okay, something I wanted to kick for a long time and never really did a, a study on this. Um, there's a certain church out there, you know, I, I don't want to name it, of course, but uh, and they teach that they are the one true church because they can trace themselves back to the apostles Peter and Paul. So therefore, that proves that they are the one true church. Uh, we're going to look at the scriptures today. I'm going to show you some verses that could be used for that teaching. I'll do that first, and then I'll show you the scriptures that are used against that teaching. In other words, that you have to be able to prove that you were taught by so-and-so, and he was taught by so-and-so, and he was taught by so-and-so, and the holy back to Peter or Paul. Okay? We're going to look at the scriptures today, all right? And I'm going to show you why that whole thing doesn't work, this apostolic succession. And I'll just kind of spoil it a little bit here. Apostolic succession would have you to believe that the church is basically man's system. This man taught that man, that man taught that man, and it's just men that preserve it. What I believe as a Bible-believing Christian is it's the Holy Spirit of God. And that Holy Spirit of God is available to anyone, regardless of you know, certain men or whatever, and certain denominations and churches and whatever else. The Holy Spirit's available to you as a Bible-believing Christian. When you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes in, and He guides you into all truth. Turn first to Matthew chapter 28. I'll show you the, of course, I mean, we could, you know, that certain church, <clears throat> you know, uh, they would go to uh, the passage of Scripture where, we'll go there real quick. Matthew chapter 16, um, verse 18, they'll say, see, it says right here, this is the foundation of the church. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. They say, see? Peter's the rock that Jesus built the church on. He's the first pope. Okay, what was Paul? You know, he's not the second pope. Well, you know, it just kind of, he's just a special, you know, co-pope or something, I guess. Um, but it just kind of goes on from there. Well, there's a whole lot of problems with that. Uh, the biggest problem is Jesus is obviously referring to himself. All right, Jesus is the rock of my salvation. Um, and yours too, if you're saved. But uh, jump down to verse 22. Catholics are very good at just picking little verses of Scripture and then forget the, the context. Look down at verse 22 of that same chapter, Matthew 16, verse 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Jesus is explaining how he's going to die on the cross. And the uh, foundation there, the rock that the church is going to be built on, says, No, that's not true. Cause Jesus a liar. Verse 23, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Uh, so Jesus names Peter as the foundation of the church, and then he turns around and calls him Satan. That's kind of a problem. Okay, uh, no, Peter's not the foundation of the church. Right? It isn't Peter, and then you got to get you know trace your lineage back to him or something. It doesn't work that way. But let's go to Matthew chapter 28. I've done other studies on that, so we're not going to kick that too many times. The whole Peter foundation thing. The bugs are, of course, coming out here this morning. So, excuse me while I swat bugs throughout the study. <laughs> Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. You say, well, what's that? Well, that's the Great Commission. So there you go. You're supposed to go out there, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And you're supposed to you know, teach them to observe all things. So you see, there's your apostolic succession. You go out and you make disciples, essentially. And then those disciples make disciples, those disciples make disciples, those disciples make disciples, and see, there you go. That's the succession of the apostles. Um, well, that's true. I'm not saying that you don't have a need for anybody to ever teach you and you should never listen to any preacher or whatever else. I'm not saying that. But uh, I'm not saying 
what I'm trying to kick here in this study is this teaching that you have to have uh, some special, um, this guy passed it on to me and I'm part of this system. See, that's the danger there, that you have a special church that you have to be part of that church system. And it's a church system that's run by men and men have trouble. I mean, Peter uh, said some good things there in Matthew 16, but then he said some bad things. He's a man. He's a sinner. Um, the Lord's not going to have his church be founded upon a man-made system. Okay? That's what's, you know, what we're going to get through in this study here. Go next to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. So you need, I'll show you an even stronger one that could be used for apostolic succession. And making disciples is absolutely fine, but it's about the Holy Spirit of God that leads people into all truth. But I'll show you a real good one here. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me. See? Apostolic succession. Keep reading. Among many witnesses. Hmm. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. See, there's your succession, right? Now it's just making disciples. You go and you, you know, witness to somebody and you tell them how to get saved and they get saved. You don't just say, okay, congratulations, see you, got to get going. You know, the Holy Spirit, will, he'll just kind of contact you. you know, the Holy Spirit can speak through you. You can, you can disciple that new believer. That's what this ministry is about, okay? Discipling people in an online format. Verse 3 and 4, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. I had to throw those two verses in there. That's my two favorite verses in the Bible. But, um, you know, you can see that aspect there that there's supposed to be, um, you know, you teach younger men and you teach them how to fight, how to fight the enemy. And you teach them the, you know, your experiences and whatever else. You say, so we'll see, there's apostolic succession. You have to be taught. You have to have men, you know, commit things to you and, and things like that. Well, that helps. But I'm going to show you later on why it doesn't work to teach this as use that to teach apostolic succession. Okay. Next, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 13. Discipleship is absolutely fine, but you got to be careful about this apostolic succession stuff. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Oh boy, there you go. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. See, you're supposed to have that, those ordained leaders that are there and that, that you're, submit to, you're to submit yourself to them, okay? And therefore, you can never, you know, leave that system. You always have to stay within that system. And because if you go away from it, well, then you're kind of rogue and you're kind of bad and whatever else. And you're, you're out on your own and you're forming your own cult and all this other stuff. Uh, <laughs> That's not what the scripture is saying there. Okay? And I'm going to show you this as we continue. Um, there is supposed to be uh, some respect within the, the church, obviously. And that's, you know, Hebrews, I realize, is for a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. But what I'm saying is, you know, you can apply certain things to any dispensation. And, of course, there are, you know, you get some guy that, you know, is an elder in the church, and, and he's been taught in the Word and whatever else. And... You know, you get some young guy that just got saved and he starts bossing around this elder. Well, yeah, that's a problem. It's not supposed to be there. But that doesn't mean that the elder's word is, is somehow equal with Scripture. And that you have to be part of that system in order to remain in good standing with the Lord or something like that. The Lord might call you into some kind of a ministry where you have to go out on your own. Which we'll talk about. <laughs> Romans chapter 15. Now we're going to show you some scriptures against the thing of apostolic succession. 
Go back in your Bible to Romans chapter 15. Romans 15 and verse 20. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. No, Paul, Paul, you, you, Paul's getting a little confused here. You see, he's supposed to build upon another man's foundation. He's supposed to go, you know, and, and uh, build off of the, you know, Peter's foundation that he laid, that Jesus Christ told him to lay, you know, um, because then you have the, the apostles, you know, apostles and, and it goes from one pope to the next pope. Um, no, it doesn't. Um, do you really think that the Lord wants a bunch of little Christian centers throughout the world, special little uh, Christian cities, you know? Um, I realize that they had Antioch in the first century there, and the Christians were called, they were, you know, disciples were called Christians first in Antioch, Acts chapter 11, verse 26. I get that. But do you think the Lord really just was saying, okay, you know, just, just build that, you know, really strong Christian church there. Build a huge, big church and everything else. Get thousands of people going there. So many in, a, in uh, attendance in Sunday school. And, you know, there's no Sunday school in the Bible. But there are no church buildings either. But, you know, let's, let's get this, this strong movement of the Lord in Antioch. And then people have to get saved. You go out and you invite them to church to come to Antioch and be, and, you know, move, move your family to Antioch so that you can come to be part of a good New Testament local church. Uh, no, it's not supposed to be that way. And, um, the Lord doesn't want this apostolic succession thing where, well, I'm, I was sent out by so-and-so and I'm going to continue that work and I'm never going to question the man that sent me out. He can go totally wicked and corrupt and go against the scriptures, but I have, to, I have to remain part of that system, so therefore, I'm going to stay in it. Um, no. Uh, you know, Paul and Barnabas had a contention among themselves that was so sharp that they actually parted company. And what did they do? Uh, they went and they did the work of the Lord. You know, sometimes you'll have uh, disagreements with the brethren, and the contention will be pretty sharp, and you'll part company. I've had to part company with a lot of brethren over the years. Why? Because God had work for them to do someplace else. And God has work for me to do. I was born and raised in Pennsylvania. I lived there. I started ministry there. King James Video Ministries was started in Pennsylvania. But the Lord had work for me to do up here in Maine. And he sent me up here. Why? Why? Well, because there's a long line of independent fundamental Baptists here in Maine that I needed to go and join myself unto them. And, you know, because they go back through the, the succession of Baptist preachers back to, we can trace our line the holy back to the Apostle Paul. No, um, because there's not really any good ministries up here. A lot of Catholics, you know. You see, the Lord wants you to do something. For him he saves you for a reason you're bought with a price okay and he gives you the ministry of reconciliation and he doesn't want you i mean it's perfectly fine to learn from men and and everything else that's fine you know um but he doesn't want you to just stay in that system all the time and never say hey lord where do you want me to go see that's the issue here first corinthians chapter three go there next First Corinthians chapter three. Here's a here's a good one. First Corinthians three verse one, and I brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. You run into those in the ministry, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? What's this carnality all about? Verse 4, For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? That would be a apostolic succession, wouldn't it? Yeah, um, I trace back to Paul. You know, 
I mean, hey, if apostolic succession is a good thing, then shouldn't Paul have commended them for that? Shouldn't Paul have said, hey, it's, you know, it's actually a pretty good thing that you're, you're uh, making sure that you, you know, exalt me and that you're, you're making sure that you go back to one of the apostles? No, he's saying you shouldn't be saying, I'm of Paul. Look at this, verse 5. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom he believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? The Holy Spirit is available to you today if you get saved. And as a born-again Christian, the Holy Spirit resides within you. The author of this book right here is available to you every time you read it. And He will lead you into the truth. And He will convict you of those sins that you're wrong on. You don't need me. Okay? That's why I say about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And people say, well, where does the Bible say personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Yeah, I understand those exact words are not there, but you can understand it from reading the New Testament. I mean, whatever you want to call it, name it something else, find something in Scripture that, that, that you know, is the exact wording there. I mean, you know, I, I, I tell people it, your, your statements and things should come from the Bible, but people take that and just, you know, go just bonkers with it and say, well, you know, the, the words personal relationship aren't there, so you shouldn't say personal relationship. And I mean, let's just, you know, just calm down here. Whatever you want to call it, okay? You're supposed to know Jesus Christ, all right? There's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Do you know him? Have you called upon the Lord to be saved? Do you talk to him? Okay. Uh, if I say I know um, the president or something like that, you say, do you talk to him? Well, no, I don't really talk to him, but I know him. Uh, <laughs> that's a problem. Um, what would I need to be able to prove if I said that I know him personally? Well, that I, can, that I talk to him, you see. If I talk to him and he talks back to me, well, then I know him. Well, I talk to the Lord and he talks back to me. All right? That's a personal relationship. The Lord gave it to every man that's born again. Go to uh, Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Here Paul is writing a letter to these people at Galatia his, you know, that he's led to the Lord, basically. He's been the one that's witnessed to him and preached the gospel to him and everything else. And he went away and a bunch of, you know, basically your modern day equivalent of Hebrew roots people came and said, are you Torah observant? You know, you need to go back under the law. You need to become Jewish and all this other stuff. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel uh, unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Okay? Oh, you see, Paul is rebuking them because they were listening to other people that should have only been Paul, apostolic succession. No, Paul is rebuking them because they're listening to a perverted gospel, a false gospel. All right? Paul is saying the test here is that whoever comes to you and preaches to you should be preaching the same gospel that I preach. Not because it's Paul's, you know, special you know, apostolic thing or something. No, it's just the gospel was revealed to Paul and he preached it and everybody else is preaching it too. Again, you have to be careful of that stuff. But let me ask you a question. Um, could the Hebrew roots people go back and say, you know, hey, we can trace our, uh, our teaching, our system back to the apostle Paul through the Galatian believers? <laughs> they could, absolutely. This Torah observant stuff and, and we have to act like we're Jewish when we're not really, you know, Jewish and, and we have to start, uh, you know, 
all the stuff that the Hebrew Roots Movement does, they could go back to the Galatian believers and say we have a we are in the apostolic line. We were taught Paul taught us, and then some other men came and taught us, and then you know we're there. See apostolic succession. <laughs> uh, no, they were going bad. They were having problems, and Paul's telling them you need to return to the Lord. You see, it, this whole apostolic succession thing, when you really look at it, it's all about men. It's all about, well, uh, you know, you need to be part of some certain church. And it's funny because the Baptists will act just like Catholics in this area. Um, who sent you out, Brian? Where did you come from? Which, which Baptist church did you come from? You know, are you of Ruckman or are you of Hiles? Huh? Or Bob Jones? Which kind of a Baptist are you? You know? <laughs> Uh, well, actually, I've been to all the different Baptist churches. I've been to, you know, Bob Jones type of Baptist churches. I've been to Jack Hiles type of Baptist churches and, and Ruckman type of Baptist churches and, and a couple others and things. I've been to all those different types of things. And I've preached in the pulpits of those churches. Um, I've filled in for senior pastors many times and things. Well, then I should have stayed in the system. Uh, I can't. <laughs> Why? Well, because the Lord called me out of it. Well, how are you going to trace your lineage back to the, to the Apostle Paul? Well, I'm going to pre preach the same gospel that he preached. Do you understand? And I'm going to say, okay, Lord, where do you want me to go? And the Lord says, I want you to go to northern Maine. Remember when the first thought came into my mind, you know, I, a, a brother back years and years ago said, um, we were talking about, you know, we need to find a place to live, want to move somewhere. And the guy said, did you ever try northern Maine? How about looking in northern Maine? I, and I said, northern Maine? <laughs> Why on earth would I move to northern Maine? Here we are. God called us to here and brought us here. And, and we've seen the Lord work in, you know, a lot. And I'm looking forward to, to more, you know, things in the future. We have a lot of stuff planned. But... 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Where does the Lord want you to go? As you're turning there in your Bible to 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. Um, what if the Lord's calling you away from where you're at? Your uh, local church. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which ye heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. One of the key scriptures from the New Testament. Um, what is this ministry about? Brian Dunlinger Ministries. Uh, no. Um, Northern Maine Baptist Church. Uh, no. Um, King James Video Ministries. The book. I'll just kind of step out of the picture here a little bit. There you go. The book. Right there. I think I'm out of frame. <laughs> um, this ministry has always been about the King James Bible. And it always will be about the King James Bible. I will never, ever point to myself and say, I'm the authority. I'm here to straighten you people out. God has brought me into this thing here, and I've been given special powers that you are not, you know, are not available to you. And I come from the succession of preachers that, from Ruckman and going back through and whatever else. Uh, you know, uh, I'll point you to good preachers. I will. There's some good preaching out there. Absolutely, it's not all about me. Um, fine, whatever. But uh, there you go, right there. And if you're in some kind of a thing that uh, you know, you know, you're starting to realize, hey, there's some major problems here. And, and I've I've talked to people over the years, and and they'll tell me, you know, that they heard me preach about church buildings being corrupt, and they think, oh, you know, okay, you know, Denlinger's got some good stuff that he preaches, but. Uh, 
we can't, you know, we shouldn't be going to a church and all this other stuff. There's no New Testament church buildings. And, okay, you know, he's a little bit nuts. And it goes a little while, and all of a sudden, there's some kind of a horrible thing goes on at their church building, and they think, oh, boy, what am I going to do? And they have to leave. And all of a sudden, they find themselves um, looking at all the church buildings in their town, and they're saying, I can't go there, I can't go there, I can't go here. We've tried that place. That's pretty bad and whatever else. And What are we going to do? <laughs> uh, we're in the falling away. Not the uh, great end time revival. We are in the falling away. Remember that, okay? <laughs> it's about you having a, that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. How much do you love the truth? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, let's go next to, finally go to James chapter 1, verse 5. This is probably the strongest verse in the, I shouldn't say the strongest, but you know, one of, definitely one of the strongest verses in the, in the New Testament, really kicking this whole thing of, of uh, apostolic succession. James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of his pastor and see if he got it from his, which pastor he got it from to make sure that you're in the right line of Christians and that you can trace your lineage the whole way back to the Apostle Paul. Actually, it doesn't say that. Let him ask of God that giveth to certain men and abradeth not. Um, no, uh, that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it shall be given him there's other scriptures too we could have used in this study but i'm gonna i'm gonna end there because you know i just uh, i i've been wanting to kick this whole thing because i see this this deal i've had people ask me over the years you know who were you ordained by what church do you come out of who sent you out and whatever else like this um show me those questions in scripture you know, uh, when's the last time you won a soul to Jesus Christ? Show me that question. Show me anybody in the New Testament asking that question to someone else as a way to prove whether they're legitimate or not. You know, man has created over the last 2,000 years, approximately 2,000 years, not quite 2,000, but you understand what I'm saying. Man has created a whole system of um, practice that they call church. And... Uh, you get right down to it, it's not even based in the New Testament. Uh, church buildings, nope, not there. Uh, soul winning crusades, nope, not there. <laughs> um, apostolic succession, no, not there. Um, it has been my great desire and mission from the Lord to get people back to the Bible. And, you know, you don't have to, to throw out everything that you've ever been taught, but you just compare it with Scripture and say, okay, yeah, okay, I, this thing here that I was taught, yeah, I can see that. Um, I mean, I'm not against Christians fellowshipping together. I love to fellowship with Christians. We're not out here hiding ourselves in the wilderness and we don't want to talk to anybody. We love to talk to Christians. It's a blessed thing, you know. I mean, we, we literally, uh, the one video I did at a, one of the waterfalls in the area here, um, I forget the sermon I did there, I think one one more night with the frogs, I think is what it was called. And uh, literally, we get done recording. I'm packing up everything in my backpack, my camera and, and tripod and Bible and all that stuff. And this guy comes walking down and his wife, and she's got a long, modest skirt on. And it was kind of a, hmm. And he comes walking over to me and he says, uh, is that your truck up there? And, I, and he said, well, well, the one with the magnets on it. And I said, yeah. I said, that's, that's my truck. And he said, yeah. He said, I really like those, you know, scriptures that you have on there. And I said, are you born again? And he said, yeah. Time of fellowship there. Out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. You got to hike way back in and things and stuff. Yeah. I mean, I like to meet other Christians. We're not against fellowshipping. <laughs> All right. But this, this whole thing of shooting down other ministries based on this these false teachings like apostolic succession and which baptist church are you supported by and you got to be part of the baptist church and all this other stuff that's a catholic practice and don't fall for it 
It's, it's just a, it's a, it's ridiculous, you know? I mean, what's happened with the Catholic Church? They claim that they, their foundation is Peter and Paul. And you read Peter and Paul, they're, this is their foundation right here. This is the foundation of their teachings. Well, then, uh, you know, Peter taught uh, Polycarp or something, and, and then Justin Martyr, and, he, and then they, they just keep on piling it on their stuff until eventually the Bible's not even there. It's just, you know, this big mound of traditions on top of it. And uh, what they do doesn't even resemble what was done here in the Scriptures. Uh, just like a lot of the Baptist churches out there. And the Baptists will lie. At least Catholics are honest and they'll say, you know, divine tradition trumps Scripture. Okay, that's honest for the Catholics to, to admit that, that they hold their traditions higher than the Scriptures. But with the Baptists, it's uh, we're Bible believers in all matters of faith and practice. You know? And I was in Baptist churches and I was sent out. I had hands laid on me and the whole deal and all that stuff. And I, you know, sent out. I was going out door to door. I was, you know, evangelizing and trying to get people to come to church and the whole thing. And, um, you know, I was part of that system. But the problem was the more I studied the Bible, the more I realized, hey, you know what? This, what we're doing here is not in the scriptures. And I talked to my church leaders about it and it was, well, yeah, you know, okay, but we got to keep doing it anyways. And we're just going to keep standing up and saying, we're Bible believers in all matters of faith and practice. That's a lie. That's a lie. And the Lord called me out of that system. I didn't go rogue or something like that. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, I was to told that to my face by the last Baptist pastor, you know, whose church I left because he lied to me. Um, whatever, talked about that story before, but uh, lied, to, lied to my wife and I to get us to come there. Um, but whatever. Um, but he told me, he said, you're, you're, you're rogue. And I said, why? Because I'm going back to what the Bible teaches. I'm leaving the Baptist church because I see major problems in the Baptist church. And uh, you're not, in practice, you're not Bible believing. And, uh, oh, then you're rogue. <laughs> okay. Um, you're going to be judged by a standard. Okay. Here's your standard. King James Bible. And, uh, I'd be real careful about elevating your traditions and, and, well, we do this, and yeah, it's not in the Bible. Be very careful about that. Well, i got to be part of a good New Testament local church or else I'm, I'm kind of out of fellowship with the Lord or something like this. Uh, can you give me some scripture? Well, no, but, you know. So, anyhow, just wanted to put that study together. It's just one of those things that irritates me. Um, so... Um, Make it about the Bible, brethren, and the Holy Ghost will teach you all truth. Um, you don't have to stick around with this ministry. There's others, you know, out there and whatever else. And the Lord might call you into ministry of some kind. Um, I'm not your standard of truth. So just need to continually kind of get that in there. A lot of people, you know, lie about me and say that I'm a cult leader. I'm not a cult leader. So... That is going to be it, and uh, we'll see you in the next study.